Well, after three years of bushfires, floods, a pandemic and rising cost of living, Australians will cast their votes at the federal election sometime in May. Last time around, central Queensland played a pivotal role. Let's go live to Matt Wordsworth, who's in Rockhampton, Durumbul country, in the federal electorate of Capricornia. Matt, regional Queensland has been a fortress for the LNP, hasn't it? Yeah, that's right, Jess. Labor holds only six of the 30 seats in Queensland. None of them are outside the southeast corner. That has to change if Anthony Albanese has a hope of winning the seven seats from the coalition in order to form a majority government. And it'll be fascinating to see how many times both leaders come through here and what the reception is when they do. This is coal country. This is cattle country. Jobs are precious and housing is tight. This is where climate change and net zero are having real life impacts. And the canary in this electoral coal mine is the seat of Flynn, the seat of Capricornia, home of the Adani mine, which last election drew in the Bob Brown convoy that backfired on Labor. So our reporter, Rachel McGee, has returned there to see if attitudes have changed. This is Clermont, where mining and agriculture are the lifeblood of the town. Clermont's been up a lot of dry gully before. It's also where Bob Brown's anti Adani convoy landed during the last federal election campaign, angering locals with its anti coal message. They weren't welcome. The convoy was seen as a pivotal point in the election campaign, which resulted in a huge swing to the LNP in Capricornia, not what Bob Brown intended. He ended up being a great ally for the, you know, the Conservatives <laughs> without realising it. Personally, I think it cost Labor the it, election in, in that year. Um, you know, I can't see them making this, the same mistake twice, that's for sure. Clermont local Alan Scott was there. If we keep mining alive, we get Adani up and running, should have flow-on effects to the town. Three years on, he's still fighting for jobs. It will be front of mind when he votes. Not just for myself, but for my family as well. And for us living out here, those jobs are in mining. Mining and ag agriculture. It was here that tempers boiled over as the anti Adani convoy rolled into town. With thousands of mining jobs in the balance, locals galvanised in support of the project, turning their backs on labour. This time round, jobs and climate change are still key, but increasingly, other issues are at play. At the Emerald Rugby Club, parents worry about the future. It's about providing balance and providing opportunities for our kids so they don't have to move away. I think it's just important that we are not forgotten out here. Things With things like infrastructure, education, more opportunities for our kids, medical. Farmer Michael Burridge is focused on climate change. Oh, I think people have got to get over the thirst for uh, fossil fuels, mate. Yeah, we're... The technologies are there now for renewables. He's retiring soon and will pass the farm on to his children. I've had a pretty good run, but I worry about the kids and grandkids. For Emerald resident Rachel McDowell, better investment in regional and rural communities is key. We don't get the same health care, we don't get the same education standards that everyone gets in the cities. But she admits she's lost faith in all parties. If Mickey Mouse was running, I probably would vote for him. Rachel McGee, ABC News, Emerald. Well, we've lost the line to Matt momentarily in Rockhampton, but we'll take a look at the seat of Flynn that pundits are watching with close interest. Matt went along to see what voters there are thinking. At these beachside markets near Gladstone, it's a warm Saturday afternoon. The music is playing and the coal ships are parked up on a hazy horizon. What's the biggest know. issue around here? Space work. Everyone's getting screwed over at some point, whether it's coronavirus or something. Got to look after pensioners, mate. Old people, pensioners. We're all going to be old, we're all going to be on a pension one, one day. When I say the word federal election, yeah. what goes through your mind? More funding to the regional yeah, towns. I think maybe more affordable childcare. It's quite expensive at the moment just to be able to go back to work. Do you like the balloons? Working the passing crowd is Labor candidate Matt Burnett, whose party was punished in 2019 for its position on coal. What was the problem with the And I said they wouldn't say coal. That was the issue. I will say it, and I'll say it every day. I've been in coal mines in Blackwater just recently, standing there with coal miners and saying, I support your jobs. 
Matt Burnett is a well-known face in Gladstone, 22 years on council, the last six as mayor. The seat of Flynn is so much more than the urban area of Gladstone. It only accounts for less than half of the population of Flynn, but two industries dominate. One in every eight workers is either in mining or in beef cattle, and you only have to look out the window to see why central Queensland is the beef capital of Australia. So, Will, tell me about what we're seeing here. Well, this is, I guess, biodiversity is what it is. Will Wilson is a fourth generation farmer at Calliope Station and a powerful voice in the state's farming lobby group AgForce. It's really, really simple. If you want to grow rural and regional, get your infrastructure right, you need water, you need roads and you need communication. He says the area has grown on coal, but renewable energy projects involving solar or wind are being pitched to farmers across this region. I think in the election campaign it'll be something that's on everyone's lips. Um, but I'd hate to see it become a them and us thing. Obviously it will be a tight contest. Colin Boyce is the cattle farmer turned state MP with big plans to develop rail and port facilities if he successfully makes the leap to federal parliament. Well I think the cost of living is a big issue for everybody, uh, job security and future security. We are the people that generate the income for Australia. So this is the state of play electorally in CQ. You've got Capricornia, which is heavily influenced by the population size here in Rockhampton. And Flynn, which takes in Gladstone, but lots of country communities as well, from the fruit growing regions around Gainder in the south to the sprawling grazing areas around Emerald in the north. The LNP holds both. Michelle Landry has taken her seat from an ultra marginal to a margin of 12.4% and is facing the same ALP opponent as last time, Russell Robertson. In Flynn, the incumbent, Ken O'Dowd, is retiring. So the question is, what happens to this margin in a contest between the Gladstone mayor and the former state local MP, Colin Boyce? And then there's the wild card, One Nation. Last time around, they polled 17 and 20% of the first preference votes. There's even a CQ influence on the upper house race. The LNP's Matt Canavan is based here, and for the first time, the Greens lead candidate. The things that matter to Queenslanders are the same whether they live in the city or in the region. So everybody's concerned about the climate crisis. She says workers are worried for their jobs and need a transition plan in a net zero future. Given the electoral importance of central Queensland, their concerns are sure to feature. OK, I'm joined now by LNP Senator Matt Canavan. Matt, thanks for your time. So the budget. We got $7 billion in regional infrastructure over 11 years. Uh, I noticed that there wasn't, apart from the inland rail uh, road routes, there wasn't many projects for Rockhampton, Gladstone. Is there going to be more in this campaign or is that it? Well, we're building a lot here in Rocky. This, uh, this street here is something we have done, the Rocky Riverfront, thanks to Michelle Landry, thanks to the fact that we're investing in the regions. The biggest infrastructure project in the state and the regional parts of the state is about to kick off just west of here, the Rockhampton Ring Road. That's going to be amazing for our town because it'll help people connect from the north of Rocky down to the Gracemere Industrial Area. There is so much going on this place. I mean, this, this, this city was built by gold. It's now being supported by the booming coal industry too. Let's talk about coal because both major parties have signed up to net zero. Does that mean there's going to be fewer coal jobs? Well, look, I think it's a real issue uh, for our country. Now, the LNP is not going to put taxes in place, but if we move away from coal, sure, we're going to have fewer people working in this industry. That'll hurt regional towns like Rockhampton, Mackay, all through this area. So I'm sure people, people are going to be asking you, like, can you yeah. guarantee my job? I can't guarantee anything, but what I can guarantee is we won't put taxes on uh, coal mines in this area like the Labor Party will. That we'll continue to support the growth of the coal industry like we did with the Adani mine. And, the, and our coal, our high quality coal, is in record demand around the world right now. And people have been talking to me the last couple of days a lot about the rising cost of living, especially mm. housing mm. in Rockhampton and surrounds. Is there something you can do to help there? Well, look, the, the, what we need to do is get more land out, and that's mainly a job for local and state governments. But it is great news, it's good news, that more people are moving up here and want to buy houses. That is pushing the price of land up. We should respond with more development, attract more people here. That's got to be done over the years with proper planning. And we were talking about the Adani convoy. Do you think that the margins for... Uh, Capricornia and Flynn are safe for your party? They're never safe. They're never safe. Uh, what what goes in can always come out. Uh, they were big swings last time, but just a few years ago, these seats were very close. I never take it for granted. We've always got to work very hard to represent people, fight for them. Then they'll support you. All right, Matt Canafan, thanks very much for your time. Thanks, Matt.